Hey guys, what is up? Left it back here again, and thanks for checking out the video. So today we finally have some gun content coming at you. Finally, it's been a long time coming, but I finally scraped up enough stuff together and actually put together a firearm related video. So let's get right into it. So today we're going to be talking about this, which is the Glock 17 Gen 5. And we're going to be talking about this, but more generally speaking, the Gen 5 in general. Let's get right into it. Okay, so we have a couple other guns here that I might talk about if I need to bring them in for an example. But I really want to dive into uh, the Glock 17 Gen 5 and then, again, the Gen 5 in general, what I kind of think of it. And whether or not it's kind of worth the upgrade, uh, basically. So, first and foremost, let me say because stuff is still, you know, kind of the way it is with COVID and guns are just not existing anymore. Um, this is a little bit of an interesting uh, scenario with this gun. Now, generally, it's a Glock, so I can kind of speak from experience because I have plenty of Glocks with lots of rounds on other on the others. But this one has a total of two rounds, so you know it, it is kind of what it is. COVID uh, stuff like that. That's all I could afford, right? Um, and basically, this is the only thing that they have in stock, which is a basically a California compliant uh, version. I don't know if this actually is technically California compliant because I think they have to have older guns or some shit, which is why. Uh, luckily, the Gen 3 is still in production or some shit like that. That's what I hear on the internet. So it's true. Um, but yeah, so this is a it's a 10 round magazine. Came with three of them, as most locks do nowadays. But anyway, let's jump right into it and kind of talk about this gun. So do I think the Gen 5s are an upgrade? Now, it depends uh, kind of who you are. But for me, I am a left-hander, as my YouTube name suggests. Do I think it's an upgrade? uh for me personally i think it is um for me to basically go let's just say we have this scenario here for me to go click slide locks to the rear <clears throat> excuse me i don't know what the fuck that was and then be able to get it to a new uh magazine in but have to do a little bit of a reach around or if i'm fancy i can leave my finger against the slide and do that now that is more of a kind of a you know god i hope this works technique or vice versa, I take the Gen 5 with the ambi slide release, put a new mag in and drop it just like that after I slide it in. Giggity. Um, so for me, is that a, generally speaking, back before the whole shenanigans, this was about roughly around a $50 to a $75 increase in price. Now they're basically about the same. If you can find Glocks, they're basically all 600 bucks. doesn't matter if they're Gen 3 or whatnot. Um, the only difference is uh, MOSs are probably going to run closer to 700 but this is kind of what it is so this big feature this ambi slide lock is that worth the price increase let's say we go back to before it was crazy i think it is for me personally because as i said before there are ways of running a a gen 3 a gen 4 or whatever like that uh without any type of like real funky whatever stuff like that but just to be able to have that that visual when i go to actually drop the slide and not have to do this kind of reach round technique which i do again i have uh, videos on and you can get extremely fast on it but in the end of the day it's always kind of this god i hope this works and especially when i uh do the little slam technique under speed it can get a little just like that under speed it can get a little a little janky in order to make sure you actually can get that uh slide release to press when you put your finger on finger on it so just having the Ability to take my thumb and slide it in, I think is just, I don't know, I think it's just worth a million dollars. Now, again, you can obviously run your your actual weapon hand thumb over the side lead, so then when I put it in, the pressure alone will drop it. Um, problem is, uh, for somebody like me that doesn't actually have that technique, I basically have a few hundred dry reps of that, and I don't have any live fire, so that technique is a little new a lot of times i have to practice with dummy rounds because i'm doing it premature and that's why honestly i still just do i like this hand to control the gun this hand just does the trigger and that's the same thing for the ar that i put the mag in i hit the bolt release or i can charge it whatever you want to do that's why i kind of like to do it so but again for me i think that's just a million bucks now for the other things the, you know the front cock insertions are kind of whatever i i actually do like them i like the looks of the gun it's a little bit of a darker matter black as opposed to this kind of gray look now granted this is a little bit worn to a degree but you know kind of is what it is um what do i think of the trigger i don't like it actually i think out of the box it's 
it's it's it's actually worn in surprisingly well just from doing dry reps because that's all I can afford to do nowadays. Um, but they I have felt one that has a lot more round count and they do smoothen up quite a bit. And I think it's very comparable to a probably a Gen 4 uh, that's more newish. The problem with Glock triggers, in my opinion, it's not that they're heavy, it's that they're kind of mushy. This one's got plenty of rounds on it, and it's just, it's significantly lighter than this one. I mean, it's just, it's got creep and it's plasticky shit, but God, it's it's light, you know, I mean. And even my uh, my carry one here, my seven or my, my Glock 19, that's even a nicer trigger than that. Uh, but the problem is, yeah, they kind of wear in. They just get kind of mushy. They're, they're light and they're easily to shoot, but they're just kind of mushy. This, <clears throat> I know when they do wear in, they are still that nice positive click, although they do lighten up on the on the weight of it. But I don't know. I think they could have done a better job, but, you know, that's what they did. Um, the removal of the finger grooves, honestly, if it's a 17, like, like this one is Gen 4 17, don't give a shit. Um, Glock 19 Gen 5, I would absolutely, um, get rid of the grooves. I think it feels a lot better <clears throat> in my personal opinion. Um, all the other stuff internally about the, uh, trigger and the barrel, don't really give a shit about that. Uh, the magwell, now they do have a little bit of a beveled magwell and it's nowhere near to the level of the aftermarket, uh, availability of it. This is the mag pool over here. <clears throat> I still think aftermarket um, adjustments to this are probably needed because here's the problem with the Glock um, magwell issue. It's not necessarily how big the magwell opening is. It's this little cutout here in the back strap. That's what I always have fucking issues with because when you don't have rounds in the mag, it goes in very easy because there's nothing to hang up on. Once you get, let me see if I can grab some, uh, oh, that ain't going to work, is it? Let's grab this one. Uh, spare rounds, baby. Once you get some magazines with actual live ammo, the rim of the cartridge on the back can get snagged on that, as you can see. And I cannot wiggle it. I mean, you kind of have to eventually wiggle it free, but that is generally speaking where I get hung up on the most. It's not necessarily getting the angle correct, you know, to get it in. It's getting hung up when you're trying to kind of glide it forward and stuff like that. Now, obviously, they fixed the front strap issue with the more latest versions of the Gen 5. The earlier versions had the cutout ones, kind of like the early Gen 3 version had the cutout. Um, you know, I think they could have done a better uh, job with this, but it kind of is what it is. Um, you know, I mean, it's basically they, they helped you on side to side, but you still need a plug, in my personal opinion, which I'm just not a big fan of. So, you know, again, is what it is. Kind of my, my catchphrase, I suppose. Uh, the sights, the sights are better. They're a little bit wider and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, still fucking switch them out. Uh, I'm really starting to like fibers. Um, I think for the price difference from Tritium, I think they offer a better sight picture in the daytime for sure above Tritium. And they're still steel, so, I mean, the tritium could fall out, but it doesn't really fucking matter because they're steel. You can still see them and stuff like that. And if it gets too dark and the tritium don't work, that's why we have uh, flashlights, baby. So that's kind of my thing. And I think, you know, those are the uh, Ameriglows. I think they're like 70 bucks or something like that. You save $20 or $30 or whatever compared to the uh, fiber optic night vision ones. But I think they're just, uh, personally, I think they're just a better, better value. So... Now let's go into the whole thing that some guys that are left-handed might have an issue with. Um, basically, to the just to get down to it and just kind of put the, the book in on this, do I think the ambi controls are worth it? If you're left-handed, yes. Not, no, I don't, I don't think any of these things are worth it. Now, some left-handers, especially me, I haven't noticed this yet, but I know some people do. Um, Glocks are very nice because they have this ridge where the frame meets the slide. And especially in the older gens, there was no controls up here, right? So we can get extremely high without having any issues causing the weapon to malfunction, right? Because all of our controls are over here. And unless you have just have gigantic fucking hands, uh, I cannot make this uh, gun malfunction by gripping it really high. Now, I will say some guns that are ambi- Slide releases, I do feel them, but I have never caused them to actually lock back prematurely. Um, and I am very prone to premature other things. But this, I've never had an issue with. Um, but now, I can feel this creeping on my uh, knuckle and my thumb here. So, 
Again, I've only shot this twice because that's all my budget will allow for, but um, we shall see if this is an issue. Now, there are some guns like this that just, you know, you just kind of have to run the older versions because they work better. Really good example is the Gen, uh, the M&P 2.0s. For whatever reason, uh, the 1.0s do not have this. The 2.0s, if you leave, if I leave the magazine release stock on the left side of the gun, if I'm holding it, um, sometimes in a recoil and if I'm death gripping it, I can actually get my, my finger meat to actually dislodge that magazine. Doesn't happen all the time, but it happens enough to make me not want to carry it kind of thing. And that's why I don't, because actually I do enjoy those pistols, because I think the trigger is vastly improved and all and shit like that. But again, the slide blades don't, go, don't goddamn work. Um, so it kind of is what it is. I think everybody should shoot the guns they're going to carry, and especially if they're going to depend their life on it in order to kind of weigh it out. <clears throat> but for the most part, at least generally speaking, I really, really do like the Gen 5 Glocks, and I think, you know, especially if you can get your hands on one nowadays, they're worth the money. Uh, but I also do want to compare those to other guns on the market, like the PP, or excuse me, well, PPQ, I suppose, as well, but the CZP-10, because I think that's actually probably its closest competitor as of right now in terms of features and very closeness to it. So, anyway, I want to cut this video because it's going a little bit too long, but anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, drop a like if you liked it, and I might have comments and stuff below if you guys want to support the channel. It would mean a lot. Um, and I have different ways. I have affiliate links and stuff down there through Amazon. If you want to buy some of the stuff that I carry, um, you can help support. I don't even know what percentage I get back if you actually do purchase like a flashlight or something. No idea. I've never used it before. So anyway, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for you. Hopefully some more vids coming up anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah. Be good.